Arthur crossed to the other side of the table, leaning over the second chair for a better view out the window, trying to spot his son amidst the other children. Not seeing the boy, he shifted his gaze, looking further and further down the street. He paused, shook his head, and realized he was staring off into space, off along the sidewalk where the children pass on their way home from school. Why should he be doing that? No reason came to him. In fact, he'd forgotten why he was standing there at all. Couldn't recall where he'd been heading or why. Arthur sighed softly, comfortable with his confusion as with an old friend, and sat down once more. The uncertain light of the October sun wandered through the broad window of his study, offering him a partial view of the children walking past on their way home from school. He sat at a small table by that window, dealing out playing cards, back and forth, over and again, stopping only when he had two piles of five cards each. Setting the deck down, he picked up the pile closest to him. An ace, two fives, a ten, and a king. Arthur absently rotated the cards in his hand. King, ten, five, five, ace. He placed the ten and, after some hesitation, the ace face down toward the center of the table and picked up the, picked up the deck to deal himself two new cards. A second king and a seven. An assortment of poker chips were stacked to his left and he took one blue and one red chip, pushing them into the middle of the table. Arthur shoved back in his chair, placed his cards face down on the table, and stood. Turning, he pulled out the chair in front of him and seated himself at the table by the window. Idly, he picked up the pile of playing cards that lay before him, glancing at the hand. A pair of jacks, a six, a four, and a tray. Arthur grinned, tossed a blue chip from a stack by the window on his right to its twin in the middle of the table. He dropped the three, four, and six face down by the chips and helped himself to three new cards from the deck. A five, an eight, and a nine. As he reached for the chips, the door to the study opened. A woman entered, middle-aged, dressed in a white uniform. Arthur wondered what a nurse was doing in his home. It was the sort of thing he ought to know. He hadn't a clue and realized with some surprise that he was too embarrassed to say anything. The nurse appeared to fuss about for a bit, gathering up a lunch tray abandoned at the other end of the room. Although he suspected she had a valid reason for being in his house, Arthur scowled anyway. He resented the presence of outsiders in his set, always had. When he finally did remember just why she was here, he'd be sure to tell her to eat her lunch elsewhere. In the meantime, Arthur chose to ignore her, hoping she'd simply go away. When she finally left, he noticed he was holding five cards. Not a bad poker hand, he thought. Discarding the five, eight, and nine to the pile in the center, Arthur drew three more cards, the remaining two jacks, and the ace of spades. Grinning with delight, he pushed a column of chips into the middle of the table. Sometimes life was just that good. He set down his cards and stood up to get himself a drink. Halfway to the door, Arthur realized he wanted a drink. He reached for the bottle of scotch he always kept hidden on the bookshelf. The bottle wasn't there. Arthur ruefully remembered he'd given up drinking after last month's New Year's Eve accident. He turned from the bookshelf, wistfully recalling the warmth that whiskey always brought him, and happened to glance at the table by the window. Someone had been in his study again and had left a clutter of playing cards. More than a little annoyed, he went to the table to clear them away. Arthur picked up the cards near the edge of the table, turning them over. Not a bad poker hand, he thought. Half in fun and half to tempt fate, Arthur threw the seven down into the large pile in the middle and drew a fifth card. A deuce. Damn. So much for tempting fate. He sighed and was about to gather up all the cards when the door opened. A young man entered, and Arthur stared at him in wonder. The man was an almost perfect double of his younger brother, Chester, right around the time he died. Amazed by the familiar stranger, Arthur invited him in, indicating the chair opposite him. As he sat down himself, 
Arthur glanced at some cards he was holding in what looked like a pretty good hand. He placed the two in the discard pile and drew a third king. Full house, he grinned. Looking up from the cards, Arthur realized a young man was sitting across the table from him. Arthur marveled at how much he resembled Chester. He set his cards down to look at the man more closely, noticing subtle differences between him and his memory of his brother's appearance. The young man asked how he was doing, how he felt. Was there anything he could get him, anything he needed? Arthur smiled, making polite conversation with the fellow. He glanced out the window and noticed children walking by, no doubt on their way home from school. Arthur indicated the children to the man opposite him, mentioning that his own son should be coming home shortly. The young man paused in his conversation and seemed to blink several times. He seemed upset somehow and looked away. That was curious. He had such a strong resemblance to Chester, but Chester had never been the emotional sort. Of course, Arthur reminded himself, whoever this fellow is, he's obviously not Chester. In another moment, the man had recovered somewhat and began chatting again. He told Arthur he was sure his son would be back shortly. The thought occurred to Arthur that perhaps this fellow had a son of his own. They talked a bit more, the weather and so forth, and the young man regained his composure. Eventually, the young man left, and as he went through the door, Arthur wondered why he was sitting there by the window. He surveyed the table in front of him, taking in the three piles of cards, the squared remains of the deck, and the assortment of chips. Arthur gathered up the largest of the three piles, turned them over, and began moving them about, rearranging them into ascending order. Looking at the ten cards straight he was holding, Arthur placed it down on the table, face up. Gin, he said. 